Ladies and gentlemen, row them along. As you all know, I met a Muslim line. So in 2005, I made the biggest decision in my life is to come here in the United States. 2005, May 17, 2005. The Philippines, the, the, the calendar is a little bit a day ahead. So when I came here, I arrived the same day, 17 of May, 2005. And so while I was uh, from, from Manila, Philippines, my flight goes to Japan, Narita, Japan as, as my connecting flight. So Narita, Japan, and then my port of entry is the Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, because they tell you port of entry because if you're an immigrant, the first time you enter United States, they call it port of entry. So my port of entry was Detroit, Michigan. So coming from Japan, there was a technical problem in there, so our, my flight was delayed for two hours. And so, of course, when we landed in, uh, in Detroit, I was, there's still enough time to pretty much catch, in my mind, to catch the next flight. What happened is, I didn't know, I'm not, I'm not sure about currency, it's new, right? You came from the Philippines, different currency, so when you come here, you have to understand. I have to learn, I was even surprised that you can buy a, a soda with coins. It's kind of like, oh, you could buy soda with that? It's, it's a different culture. And so when, I got to the airport. This guy said, hey, you know, when you go to the airport, somebody offered, hey, can you help you with the luggage? And so I pulled my $10 bill and I said, this is all I have. This is not enough, could we just still take it? I didn't realize these are good enough, you know, at least good tip. So I said, oh yeah, it's okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. It was like a black guy, so it's kind of like, okay. Thinking he would help me take my luggage to my next flight from Detroit to St. Louis. And so while I was waiting there where my gate was, suddenly they called my name. The flight attendant called my name, Roma Uyanib. That's my last name, Roma Uyanib. And so I was actually chatting with somebody, a military guy who heading to Fort Lynn, which is good to know. But then they called my name, so I decided to go there. Hey, your flight is delayed, was delayed, so is delayed. So here's the ten dollar voucher. And at the back of my mind, it's kind of like, man, this is not enough. What can I get with this? You know, two of two of five dollars vouchers. Remember, I just gave my $10, and now they're giving me two of the five vouchers, five dollars vouchers, so I thought this is not enough. So anyway, of course, after I found out like my flight is delayed, Amos is waiting for me at St. Louis, so I started freaking out. So I started calling Amos, I had my phone, I have a smartphone. So my phone was so much better at that time compared to the one he has. So Amos, I was freaking out, like, hey, Amos, my flight is delayed. I don't know what to do, I don't know anybody here. Remember, I'm in the new place, I don't know, I just got here, right? So of course I was freaking out. And then there was this woman, I remember she was very tall, her hair like a white, you know, you know Vicky, Vicky Hodge, right? Her hair is just like that color, like almost like a bob, but it's straight right here. And she's wearing pink, pink, uh, Pencil, it's not a pens, but pencil. And she came up to me and she, all she said, don't worry, very soft-spoken voice, everything will be all right. The moment she said that one piece came to me from this hysterical mood to that piece. I'm so here I am, I'm curious, who is that woman? So I started kind of like, maybe I could talk to her so I feel better, you know, I'm making some friends, I'm new in this country. But while I was thinking about it, I tried to follow her because she was, you know, where this is the gate. I tried to follow where she's heading. I don't, I don't know this, you know, when you are in Detroit, Michigan airport, that's a big airport. Because I don't know, I don't know the people, but I'm looking at her feet because I want to follow her. So while in the middle of the crowd, while I was walking, I'm keeping up my pace. The farther she goes, it's kind of like that's odd. So eventually I was tired of following her because I said, huh. remember I have the two of $5 voucher. And I went to, it's kind of like, oh, there's a restaurant here. So I gave it to, there's a cafe in the airport. And I told the girls, kind of like, hey, can you help me? What can I get with this? She said, she gave me these three muffins, like this big at the airport, and two juices. kind of like, I said, whoa, that's a lot of food. I didn't even realize that's a lot of food you can buy from $10 voucher. And so anyway, what happened is, she, well, before I was leaving to my gate, I lined up there all the way to the back, and she was behind me. 
I don't want you to go behind her. She won't go. The, the farther she would step like this. I wanted to go behind her because I wanted to see this person. She will not. So when I get to my plane, American Airlines, you know, I find out like you can sit down on the, you know, any seat if there's still, if there is an available seat. So I wanted to sit down right in the front. And if she comes in, she'll sit right there, right beside me. It's kind of like, yeah, you can sit down. She never came in. She never came in. Why would you line up when that was the last flight of the day in that gate? Because you can see the schedule. She did not come in. That's where I realized God sent an angel. Uh, let me read this verse. In Psalms 91, verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Psalms 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Uh, deli uh, delivers them. Hebrews 1, 14, and are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Bless the Lord. Uh, this is Psalms 103, verse 20. I read your verse that you shared last Sunday, and I found this verse over here. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. When I came in this country, despite of the, what the enemy is trying to do in my life, try to delay my flight, try to get me to the panic mode, it tells me, he was telling me that I'll take care of you. I'll take you here. It's not just because you're marrying somebody else because I have a purpose for you. If I'm standing here in front of you because God has taken me this far for a very reason. He's, isn't he a great God? 